we have three phases of society now. If somebody asks about the society and its condition, we cannot give a single answer. Because one kind of the society is very prosperous. It is hyper-plutonic, beyond human imagination and accumulation. The other side, we are seeing a promising society with new advent of technologies, promising youth leaders, emerging personalities who are going to bridge the society, social animators, social architects and many people, they are also emerging in the society. We see a lot of organizations, new organizations, new institutions, new leaders, new patterns, new visions, new dimensional analysis, introspective, retrospective, prospective visions, and a culmination of everything is also being seen in one more part. Other side, we cannot deny when we see the global scenario in its real sense that what I told in the seminar, that countries are getting first prize in beauty contests. But in medical reports, they are very pathetic. Yeah. So in beauty contest with uh, tall buildings and high profile technologies and uh, three members who are educated or even super educated, we are seeing something in the society. But the real society that represents the masses is in a pathetic condition. So what we have to do? Pathetic society, promising society, and prosperous society, we should admit all these three and see that the promising society deals with the prosperous society to make the pathetic society equally prosperous and peaceful. So the social balancing system is with the promising people and he who is interested in this balancing, such a person is said to be the denizen. Who is the denizen? The planetary citizen? He is the person who is interested in balancing the society, inquisitive in knowing about the society. So what we should do? We should create a paradigm shift. We are saying everything in developed status, isn't it so? In our apparel, in our attire, in our appearance, in our associations, in our language, in technology, everything we excel. And we want to be more excellent and excellent without any limits. Likewise, in our concern also, that should be proper expansion. Proper elevation in our concern and civilizational standards also. That's why we used to say, people are bothered about only few things. And they should be brought to the notice of few things which they are missing. Everybody is bothered about convenience. Yes, this is convenient to me, I am doing. This is comfortable, I am doing. I am competent to do so without bothering about others and their life and future. I am doing something which that I can do. So it is based on my competency. Yes, it is compatible to me, so I am doing. So here, the philosophy or the traditional wisdom, it gives a great holistic vision known as consciousness. What is consciousness? So global consciousness means that you should not go into the consciousness definition as per the transcendental religion or philosophy or spirituality. I am talking about a consciousness in the social elevation. The consciousness that is in the social context. Consciousness that is supraneural in nature or infraneural or subneural in nature that deals with various other scientific studies. I am talking about consciousness which is nothing but composite, conservative, complete, coordinated, consolidated vision. Yes, I know thoroughly about the thing which I am going to do and which I am doing. So in this type of uh, wisdom that we possess is here we mention as consciousness. The holistic view of what we are going to do. That should be that. So the whole world is now functioning with the convenience, comfort, competency and compatible level without minding the immediate, immediate, remote impact of their doing on their prospective society, existing society, their brethren and other human species as well as subhuman species. They are not bothered about the others. So how we can bring this into a harmony and how we can envision a possibly prospective society that everybody can live in reasonable prosperity and peace. Is of these cleavages, how we can do. So this consciousness is the base of everything and it should not be super spiritualized with the preternatural explanations like metaphysics, the epistemology and other things. It is a complete vision about who is with you, who is beyond you, who is behind you and who is going to come after you. This holistic vision is called consciousness. And second thing is conscience. Even if we know what is conscience or consciousness, Consciousness is the spirit. It is an all-encompassing, knowledgeable spirit of a person. It's executive ignition of spark is known as conscious. You know about everything. When you start thinking about it, suddenly you can understand that your conscience starts working. If you know that is consciousness, everybody is conscious, duty conscious, 
Why they are not doing the duty? See, that's what I told. The alcoholics, they know about the evil impacts of alcoholism more than the doctors. More than the de-addiction scientists, the alcoholics, they know about the impacts. Because they don't have active conscience. So what we need is consciousness, a thorough observation and understanding of what we do and where we live and who are the others. Then human civilizational parameters are accounted by innumerable factors, humanitarian and divine concern, totally overruled all these things, uh, telling it to be secondary or tertiary, projecting only one thing. If you are curious to know about others, bothering about the situation of those who are different from you, when you are trying to make an impact in their lives, then you are civilized. This is the only parameter for civilization as per the divine, as per the even the cosmocentric modern emerging religions or social system. This is the only definition and all other things are like wings and tails. This is the main system. This is the main frame system, everything is a subtable. So consciousness and conscience that makes a person to know and to develop an impetus to act for them, to act with them and to act by them. If they are great, act by them, that is by their rules. If they are equivalent and equally jealous in doing that with their zeal and potentiality, work with them. If they are not to their level, if they are inferior in status, if they are marginalized, work for them. So, work by the rule of great people and work with people, those who are equivalent in social commitments and work for the welfare of people, those who are marginalized, subordinate, coordinate and superordinate members of the society for, by and with this assembly is known as global consciousness or cosmic spirit that we should develop. It is not embracing the entire commerce. That's what I told you on the international seminar. If you have a global assembly, it does not mean that the whole globe should be present here. If any single person really thinking about the welfare of the globe is present in the conference, that is a global conference. Yes. We cannot bring all leaders, great leaders of the society into bias. Because people, those who are overwhelmed by the power of power, the power of power, they cannot come. Those who are totally marginalized, neglected and suppressed, they cannot come. Those who are busy, preoccupied for the daily bread, they cannot come. Those who are negligent and somnolent in the society, they may not come. The person who is coming there to think about those who have not come, he represents global community and that is a global conference. We organize few global conferences in which we don't have any international partners somehow, somehow it misses. There we used to clarify the issue and somehow escape from comments and criticism by using this technology. <laughs> In order to develop the conscious and conscience, everybody is working in a common agenda. What is that? To improvise the version of consciousness in a broader, deeper and wider sense and provoke the conscience for an executive will constantly without any second choice or any hidden agenda is the main agenda and the common agenda, the common minimal binding instinct of every personality in person here. That's what we do. And what is the social idea? What is society? There are three types of things in society. Triple I used to say. Intrusion, influence and impact. I am a personal being. I have my own wishes, will, my own direction and I am doing something. But I should bother up to society because somebody will cross in your life and create chaos. That is intrusion. Somebody will bring a benign source for your well-being, understanding and development. He will be coming from one more side. That is known as influence. Somebody who will not be meeting you or who is not in contact with you, even if something happens at a distance, it will have an impact on your life. Somebody is doing a strike, person is not connected with you professionally, personally, but it impacts your life. So it is known as a triple life. We should bother with the society because of three things. Unless you get somebody to influence, you cannot prosper by yourself. Unless you can withdraw your contacts or thwart away the intrusion factors, you cannot prosper. Unless you bother about the impact, silent impact, smart impact of distant, remote and various other entities that are living in the society, you cannot prosper. So, now cosmic vision is an interdisciplinary section for self-progress. Before a few decades, they have been thinking that selfishness and global personality, they are different people. Or different entities or different philosophies. Now they have understood that a global concern is nothing but and inter-incorporated discipline of sustainable self-centrism and self-progress. If you want your self-centrism to be sustainable, really if you want to be materialized, then you have to include a collective global common agenda without which it is not possible. Now, in the new syllabus of global education, global concern is a part or curriculum of self-development agenda. It's not, before that it was being thought as, oh, it is a symbol of magnanimity. The person should be a 
God said person, a godly person, or he should be a god in incarnation. No, it is not like that. If you want to be a person with common sense, and if you really want to be happy, you should have a concern about others without which the whole collective survival, bargaining and concern has become a compulsory or obligatory discipline now, instead of being optional or something, which is a paradigm shift which was taught by people of a few decades before. So now we have to understand this, what is the intrusion system for everybody's life? And what is the influence mechanism with which we can prosper? And third, which are all the things which may appear to be distant. That's why I used to always reiterate a Japanese proverb. That is a Japanese proverb which is also reflected in our traditional Vedas. You cannot pluck a rose without disturbing a distant star. So somehow silently, with subtlety, far beyond the palpability of human intelligence and intuition, there is something in fact created by everything. So philosophically, socially, ethically, religious, and spiritual concerns everywhere you see, you see that there is an impact created by everything on the other. So social consciousness is to understand at least the immediate surroundings of intrusion, influence and impact. That is the true lesson with which you have to start. So I have already told about distant society, proximate society, connected society and contact based society. The fifth factor is nature. Nature has its own response. It creates responses. It responds to your responses and action. So what is life now? Life is understanding, intrusion, influence and impact of distant, proximate, connected and contacted society with nature. This is the definition. This definition may frighten the people to come to your social concerns. It should be elucidated and illustrated by great people in vernacular languages and mobilize the system with simplicity so that these great things, uh, they appear to be somewhat risky, but really they are more rewarding. And all other evil activities, they appear to be rewarding, but they end with risk. This should be the rule of nature. The ethical destiny is what we call risk and reward. Everywhere we start with some risk, but it will certainly end in reward. Initial risk management, IRM technology. Somebody asked me, with which management technology can rule the world? Then I told, initial risk management technology. In every good act, just as I always used to illustrate, in delivery, in pregnancy and delivery, and in exercises like surgery, it starts with pain but ends in pressure. Like alcoholism, gambling, they start with pressure but end in pain, you know. So, the technology or management principle that is very much essential is not to prepare these people for pressure, to prepare them for a consequential pressure by a strenuous act that is to be committed for the well-being of all. So, preparing people, not only as mere uh, people, those who can be entertained or entertainers of others, to prepare a battalion of people who can take with the risk, as well as a very great badge of people who can deal with the reward and distribute the same to society. Preparation is known as ambivalent preparation. Duty of every spiritual philosopher, ethical and social philosopher, duty of every teacher and parent is to inculcate a bivalent preparatory purpose in every citizen or recipient by all possible means so that they can be balanced both at the time of risk and reward. Now there is imbalance both at the risk and reward. At the time of risk, at the time of risk we are seeing what? Exhaustion. The person is feeling exhausted. The person is feeling discouraged. The person is totally demasculated. So the person's potentiality, vigor and courage, everything is totally made imbecile by means of their problems. So risk they are prepared. Even in reward, they get into atrocity, they get into arrogance, they get into exploitation other things. What is the duty of every person? Any social animator should see that they can create an ambivalent preparatory process and prowess inside the recipients. And coming to the main point, sociocentrism. Somebody asked me a very wonderful question. The question is something realistic and pragmatic also. <laughs> I am a personal entity, I have my own limitations. You are asking me to worry about somebody in Ethiopia, Somalia, Tunisia, Syria, Iraq, how I can do that? I don't have resources, I don't have any time at all. You are asking me, see, a person who cannot walk, the person is compelled to dance. How it is possible? So I am not capable of caring for my resources and my sustainability. How I can think about somebody else? Then the great traditional seer, they answer very comfortably. Whatever you see now, people used to call SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. That is one more SDG as per the Shastras, SDG, Social, Divisional and Global. Whatever the problem that you are facing, for example, learning disability, then involvement engineering in classrooms, mnemonic engineering or memory engineering, 
teacher student relations ambience engineering curriculum architecture infrastructure development everything that you are seeing in academics in employment nepotism corruption lacking of recognition lobbying then unlawful entries then double entries double income triple income all these various things ills and evils are countered in employment area so everywhere wherever you see something in the society that is reflected in you so we answer that there is no personal problem in the society at all every problem that you face is nothing but an infinitesimal representation of what is there in the society what is there in the division particular division like employment environment uh, in ethics in relation like domestic relation in social relations in caste and ethnicity in religious uh, structures and spheres and whatever you see is nothing but your infinitesimal reflection of the society the that division and the same thing with pervades the society it is blue so that division the society and the globe whatever that has in a very magnificent structure that is reflected in you in a small way so unless you have a broader vision your personal problem cannot be solved why it cannot be solved very simple you see whenever if there is employment for example there is employment if you are having employment problem that's not exclusively for you your wife and children may be exclusive within four corners whenever you come to something known as employment then employment is a social issue <coughs> and whenever there is a social issue you should be prepared for six major rules and roles you have to do six major roles because the rule number 1 everything should be fully aligned and active if it is not there you have a role known as revival if something is not there observe it if some essentials are not there what is your role you have to revive it you have to do and if that dynamism is lacking you have to rejuvenate it if that should be some changes of trend because of change of time change of periods technology and various other trends setting in the society you have to restructure it and whenever the system is getting into corruption or infection you have to reform it whenever the society is becoming weak because of lack of patronage and practice we have to reinforce it whenever it is put into turmoil you have to bring your renaissance so reviving then restructuring rejuvenation renaissance and reinforcement and reform these are the six major duties how we can do if there is a reform deficit for employment and if you are unemployed without the reforms being brought how will we reemployed or deemployed it's very really impossible so you should understand in a global system every personal system or personal deficit efficiency is tinged tenaciously to a global network divisional and social networks <laughs> so we used to say in order to make this see six things possible you see these six things are very much essential so an individual cannot do anything because he cannot bring that so he needs uh, two major sessions one is collective and second is team spirit you cannot ask everybody to participate if there are 40 lakhs of unemployed people 4 millions of unemployed people there are two possibilities all the 4 million people giving attendance for a fight for a democratic agitation or protest that's not going to happen at all for that 4 million people 400 people with the social centrism or social concern and social attention and action such a dynamic people they can come forward and lead the society and they can bring some change so there is something known as hierarchy of social architecture in the hierarchy of social architecture first people are leaders these leaders can motivate just 100 people who can in turn motivate and liberate thousands and millions of people they come as trail blazers and second thing is motivational leaders motivational leaders by the oratory by the writing by the fight by the judicial remedial exercises by the democratic exercises by electoral reforms by the citizenry and its rights they can bring some change to the society the second level third level of people are those social motivators not motivational leaders those who can assemble the society those who can assemble the society but the, by the good will and communication skills not with their expertise and extraordinary skills those who can move in the society and for these grassroots organizations and volunteers and fifth in social hierarchy construction hierarchy is people those who don't disturb these four people those who contribute by the silence and distance even though not by contribution so how to construct you know that in a medical industry we need uh, medical assistants we need surgeons super surgeons doctors and several people in the society also 
we need uh, the architects of change. We need the architects of change in the first level. We need the architects of social concern and integration or federation in the second level. Third thing is social mobilization and association. Fourth thing is voluntary service or grassroots service, those from the base. So we need all these types of people to mobilize the society into positive action. This is what we call social hierarchy. And third is very interesting question. Recently some student asked me, <coughs> I am not having enough time to prepare for my examinations. I have to counter my exam. I have to counter three people. Three frightening elements are there for students. One is fees, second is faculty, and third thing is examination and studies. So they have to counter all these people and they don't have any time for that. So what is the answer? That is my time, that is my labor or energy, and third, where are my resources, and fourth, how I can face the risk, how we can allocate risk management, resources management, time management and energy management in these social centric activities is a natural question. Somebody asked me the same question. Sir, you are paid. Even though you are not paid, you are well off, you are already settled. We have a lot of things to face. In our domestic, in our neighborhood environments, we have a lot of things to face. Where we can do that? Then I answered, how much time you are allocating for your entertainment? There are two types of time passing in the society, entertainment and empowerment. Those who are passing that time, those who are passing their time in empowerment, they are in the higher profile status. What we have to do? There is an entertainment which should be in the form of a pickle. You know the quantity of pickle to be consumed. We should not exceed the quantity of rice. So entertainment, which should be a reliever of the academic burden, reliever of that domestic and social tensions that should not take a major stand in every human life. Entertainment and empowerment, that's what I told. Reasonable entertainment and rational empowerment, if they are the two eyes of modern students, time and event, then we can create a great revolution in this society. So what we need, these things can be brought by entertainment, which is in a limited fashion. Then I told in a lecture, ethical entertainment, there was a lecture. Then I gave, I want to give just the quintessence of what I told. Entertainment can be justified, provided it has three young inside. One is munificence. If you are conducting a lot of shows like sports, like media and other various other entertainment channels, if the outcome, resources are utilized for social reconstruction, that is justifiable. Second thing, message in every cinema, drama, play, music, action, dance and sports. If you can convey a parallel or collateral message of social awakening, awareness or integrated action, that is justifiable. And third thing is mitigation. If you are having a constructive social work and you are having the burden of work in the form of tension and exertion, if it can mitigate your tension and exertion so that you can recreate yourself with the recreational skill in your creative activities, it is justifiable. Unjustifiable entertainment in a burning globe is a sin. That's what great people do. Let me let people is dying. So, so what we have to do is, we have to create either we have to engage in complete empowerment process. Otherwise, we have to justify the system of entertainment by these parameters. Then I told, I have met a lot of students. A person was crying, a student was crying, saying that instead of learning these new computer languages and upgraded versions, I was playing cricket. Now I am repenting for that. So there are two types of entertainments. One is uh, repenting and second is rewarding. Get into entertainment. We are human beings and we have also a cultural dimension inside. Cultural, recreative, ethical, moral, innumerable dimensions of that incorporated in human caliber. So that should not be wasted but see that it is compatible with the other social commitments and personal accreditation also. That is what we want to see. And finally, two major points I want to emphasize here. Accumulation of social burden. In which two points I want to say. One is rap, rapid action force and second is about super duty. It is very, very much essential to note here that accumulation of social burden, how these things have been accumulated. Now poverty, hunger, malnutrition, in fact mortality, wherever you see any social ugliness, wherever you see, you see it in a huge indigestible quantum. How it has come? It emerges from a person and a group of persons when the same thing is either nourished by personal or social negligence that becomes monstrous. That starts as a small spark. But being unnoticed or uncared or unsolved, the same thing becomes a very great social dispute. All global issues are unnoticed, uncared, or untreated personal and group diseases or provincial diseases. 
There is nothing known as global issue at all. You have made it global. That is our contribution. So, by means of imitation, whenever somebody does, the same thing is done by people and there is a race. Competition. Who is going to spoil the world or get spoiled more? There is a competition that is happening now. So, this is what accumulation of social burden, the major issue that is there in the society should be countered with a major force. Somebody asked me, so as it has started from a person and gradually percolated in the society and fostered by this negligence, silence and other things, similarly, the global solutions, they should also start like that. No, it's not possible. If you start the global solutions also, in the same manner, in the silent, slow, steady manner, the global perish before you find the solution. So that is why people, they have answered, that which has penetrated in the society in the form of ills and evils, they have penetrated very slowly, percolatively, percolated very smartly, and they have taken a master shape. But the solutions should be entangled with a special mission known as rapid action force. You should not wait for the slow and silent transformation of the society. Parallel to slow and silent transformation of society, great leaders should take charge. It is known as trilateral action. One is to create a long-term plan, teaching them what is good and evil. There is a long-term plan. It is just like cultivating paddy for somebody's hunger. It will quench the hunger of a person who is going to be a prospective consumer, not today's consumer. So, immediately we have to create a rapid action force. And second is promotive action force, PAF, promoting people, those who are already there. Cultivation or cultivative action force in which you are going to start something. So anything cannot be substituted for other. A trilateral commencement of all the things together, spontaneously, will create a solution. So we need three teams of people working for the cultivative section, promotive section, and the community level, there should be rapid action force. One more final interesting point is, a person asked me a question. It was very interesting. Sir, I am doing my duty. If I am doing my duty, isn't it enough why you are asking me to do intro to other people to the name of positivism or social action? Then I told, if everybody is doing their duties, if you are also doing the duty, you will be benefited. But we are surrounded by a quadrilateral trap. What is that quadrilateral trap? Those who don't do their duties, those who do their duties perfunctorily, those who don't allow others to do their duties, and those who are against their duty consciousness. If you are living with these four people, if you are only doing your duty, then you will not be rewarded. You will successfully fail in your life because all the other people are not like you. So what is our duty? Our duty is not duty but super duty. What is super duty? To take care of not only one's own duty but also those who are not doing their duties, those who are not allowing others to do their duties, those who have a perfunctory or prevaricated format of doing duties and those who are against their duty rules and morale. Unless you handle all these four people doing a duty, will be a substance of mockery in the society, mockery and failure in the society. You will be getting only turmoil. So what do you have to do? Super duty. So people, those who are thinking and talking about duty, should stop talking about something known as duty at all. The world now needs the IC on CCU, which is super duty and super supremo duty, without which the society cannot be balanced. What we need is social balances. What we need is social balance. How it can be done? Single statement I can do. I can just, example I can put. One thing is negligence. Second is exploitation. The society is full of these people only. Every earnest citizen willing to prosper is sandwiched between two people. Those who don't bother about these people and those who bother these people by all times. Those who bother these people and to those who don't bother about these people. We are sandwiched between these two people. So what you can do? That's what somebody asked me the question on political engineering. That was a seminar. Somebody asked, if five or six countries are members of Global Security Council, what is the collective name given for other countries? Simply I told Global Insecurity Council. <laughs> because if these people are given power in their hands, masculine power is fully vested in few hands, then all people should form an association known as Global Insecurity Council. Without forming the council, they are facing insecurities. That's what we are thinking. So this sandwich, how we can improve, how we can improve our ability to counter this sandwich, how we can come between the sandwich, the compression of ethics and empowerment instead of this exploitation and neglect, how it can be re-sandwiched with a greater quality, how it is possible? We give three answers. Three people can do that. One is the affected people, the first right for their own recovery goes to rescue, goes to affected community. 
Second is altruistic community. Those are knowledge and power to serve the society. Second. Third thing is administrative community. If administrative community fails, it is our duty to see that the altruistic community feeds the affected community to form new governments. Dethrone, enthrone and rethroning facilities are there in the monsters. With absolute democracy, they can bring the same justice into society. And finally, recently somebody made a global institute. Then he told in global version, there are four divisions. If somebody is talking about globe, 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 world, universe, there may be belonging to four categories. One is fashion, because now it has been a recent fashion that everybody talks about the globe. There is no meaning and there is no use of the society at all. So that is known as fashion. Second thing is fascination. Everybody is interested in bothering about other countries and doing something without minding what is happening in their locality. And third thing is evasion. If they are not interested in doing any service, they will say they are going to do it globally. So that nobody can come and ask when they are going to finalize it. And fourth thing is destination. So we should see in global organizations, we have people, those who are immersed into fashion, fascination, as well as evasion, with destination orientation. We are having it as an aim, life purpose. We are traveling together. And what we have to do? We have to market this to the whole globe. But I told them in one warning, statutory warning for this global campaign, as I told, if there is new trade, new commodity, if there is new technology, if there is any new smart way or tactic way of more power or wealth enrichment, immediately all countries will give red carpet welcome. Isn't it so? Once there was a peace-oriented seminar in the Middle East, the person was sent back. Then he asked me why he was sent back. Then I told that you are received or responded by a new department there, known as tourism and hospitality department instead of hospitality department. <laughs> if you have a new commodity, if you have any special technique which can earn you money, power and wealth, immediately you will be received everywhere. But with this global campaigning, against the, it is not against the public, it, it is against the public welfare, it is against those rulers who are not public centric in nature. It may not be immediately received by all countries or all provisions. So wherever we have receptivity and reception, let us all federate together with the available energies so that we can tackle all the other places. See, we have to do only two things. The Shastras used to say we have to do two things. What is that? One, integrate all of your voices and shout. All other people will become silent. So let us do that. And in this global campaigning, I'm very happy that we have assembled here and this institution. I don't know about the present students, I don't know about the other students, but still, in this auditorium, in this ambience, we have exploded or outbursted our inner zeal, craving and courage. And somehow it will reverberate into every wall and pillar of this construction, as well as the inhabitants, and see that something great will happen in the society in the near future. And this global action means there are five possibilities, we used to say. As whatever we do in the path of globe, it impacts the globe, it is known as global action. Second thing, wherever we associate with global organizations and network with them, that is known as global action. Third thing, whatever you are doing for your development or provincial development without disturbing the global harmony and order, that is also global development. Fourth thing, whatever you do here, if it can motivate, inspire and direct other people of the globe, that is also global development. Fifth thing is organized development, or organized mission of global development. And we are not going to create mere compatible things or mere uh, motivation, direction or other things. We really mean global development that every corner of the globe in our mission as an ultimate goal should be benefited by the real senses. We are not touching uh, our mission or we are not teaching our mission. We are touching their own genuine hearts and we are teaching only their spiritual mission. We are not imposing anything from our side. It is universal message. I welcome all the participants and the silent spectators and listeners. I don't know how many people spectated and how many listened. All these people, sentient, insentient and the most vigilant, super sentient, I welcome all people to this noblest mission. It is the inaugural session of our integrated action which will be torrential and perennial throughout our lives and continuing lives. Let us penetrate because whatever we see, it may have immediate impact, it may have belated impact, it may have transgenerational impact. Let me have at least the sympathy or care for my generations so that they can live, they can live in a better, livable and lovable planet. Narayana, Narayana.